The National. Here is Wendy Mesley. Good evening. Was he still alive, or was Robert Jakansky already dead by the time medical help arrived? Tonight, what appear to be conflicting accounts from official sources of Jakansky's condition after being tasered by the RCMP. As Melanie Nagy reports, the new confusion comes as police try once again to clarify the events before Jakansky's death. Robert Jakansky lies on the ground shortly after being jolted with a taser. Four RCMP officers hover around him. It looks as if they're doing nothing to help him. Canadians across the country have been demanding answers, and today the RCMP tried to provide them. What I'm here to do today is to correct a perception that's out there by the public to that our officers or the officers involved absolutely did nothing. And, uh... The RCMP is once again defending the actions of the officers involved in the now infamous taser incident at Vancouver's International Airport. Jakansky was hit with a taser 25 seconds after police arrived. He died shortly after. Police say in the moments leading up to his death, the officers were doing everything they could to assist him. Right after the Mr. Zakansky was um, administered the uh, conducted energy weapon, uh, he was arrested and he was placed in handcuffs. As soon as that was done, he was monitored, and he was monitored for a period of time and identified that he was breathing and that he was uh, fine. Minutes later, police say Jakansky slipped into unconsciousness. Emergency medical personnel were called. He was breathing and that he had a pulse. Uh, they continued to do that monitoring throughout the time that they were waiting for the emergency medical personnel to arrive. The first to arrive was the Richmond Fire Department. Immediately, a crew initiated a medical assessment and asked police to remove Jakansky's handcuffs, but police refused. Our officers uh, assessed and felt that he, it was not uh, a safe environment to have those handcuffs removed. Today, though, a seemingly different account from the fire department. When the fire crews checked Jakansky's vitals, they say he had no pulse and he was not breathing. There was no threat. Uh, our crews, uh, while they were doing their assessment, had asked that the handcuffs be taken off. The RCMP had indicated that uh, he had been violent before and they didn't want to take the handcuffs off. Uh, and so our crews continued with their assessment. He definitely had no pulse and no breathing, so yeah, I would, you know, like, Clinically, yes, I guess he was dead. BC Ambulance Service was next to arrive. They too asked for the cuffs to come off. Only then did police oblige. Based on the continuous monitoring and assessments that the, the officers and the YVR security officer were doing, it was their impression that Mr. Zakansky had a pulse and that he was breathing up until the time that uh, medical uh, emergency medical personnel arrived. We asked the RCMP about the fire department's claim Jakansky was already dead when they arrived and why the officers would still perceive a threat and not remove his handcuffs. The RCMP would only respond by saying those are questions for a public inquiry. Melanie Nagy, CBC News, Vancouver. <laughs>